when you're studying centripetal force, most likely in your first physics uh, course that you take, so maybe in grade 11 or maybe introductory physics in post-secondary or wherever it might be, you're going to um, probably wonder what is this force all about. The equation is relatively simple and for most people they don't really know where this equation comes from, um, especially when you are talking about centripetal acceleration as well and how it is added to centripetal force. So my goal here is to um, go over this centripetal force and introduce it to you, maybe give you a, a simple example or so, just so that you can see how to calculate it, which is, I don't believe will be a, a problem for you, um, but understanding it might be. So what is this centripetal force? Well, there is one particular assumption, and it's a huge assumption that we make. When you are moving, um, you know that you're not always going to be moving at a constant um, speed. Um, but in centripetal force, when you're doing these types of calculations, you assume that you are moving at a constant speed. However, you know that if you're going to be moving at a constant speed, um, either forward, backwards, or in whichever direction you're moving, then there really isn't any acceleration. So that isn't anything new to you. So you either can be speeding up or slowing down. But the one major assumption there has been that under those two circumstances, you're basically in one dimension. So you're moving in one dimension. But what happens when you now are not moving just in a straight line, but now you're changing direction? So maybe you're now making a turn left, making a turn right, okay, or spinning in some particular way. When you're changing directions, that is a change of velocity. Your actual magnitude, so your speed itself, can be the same. That's what we assume in centripetal force and actually in centripetal acceleration as well. So with this thought in mind, I just wanted you to know that we're going to assume that V is constant. But when I say constant here, I am referring to the actual speed. I am not referring to the actual direction. So the direction is changing. And now when you are going to be changing, so you're going to be either, let's say, you know, moving in this way and you're changing direction like so, Okay, let's say maybe to the right, or maybe you know, you're moving this way, which is going to be to the left. Now, you can change directions in all kinds of different ways. It doesn't have to be to the right or to the left. You, know, you could be um, moving in various pathways. Now, the key item is that you are going to be changing. So from an initial point here, you know, and as you're changing along, and as you're moving, your direction is changing. So here, because we know that the actual velocity itself has a direction. So if this was our initial direction right here, well, eventually, you know, you might change it back. Okay, and now you can see that the actual vector changes, although your magnitude is the same. Now this magnitude V, we're going to assume is in meters per second. However, it can be in any other unit. But if you want to stay with SI units, so the standard metric units, then keep it in meters per second, and you can certainly convert it to that. Now, Breaking this formula down further, so if this is my V and we're assuming that it's constant and the only thing is that's happening is that it's changing its direction. So how does this relate related back, right, to this centripetal force? And I'll talk about what centripetal uh, might mean to you as well. So there's this little R here and you might wonder, well, what the heck is that and why is this in the formula? Well, the main reason is because when you're making these changes, so as you kind of, kind of are changing directions in here, I'm going to kind of shift this around as best I can. Okay, what you are actually doing is you're almost, if you would continue in that change, right? And if you would be continuing in that particular way, okay, at that point, um, you would might create an actual circle, okay, that is going to be moving around. So now, you know, you might fit this in and this might be some kind of a circle. This doesn't mean that you automatically are going to be going in a circle. In some cases you might be, but if you're making a, a turn, a left turn or a right turn, you may not necessarily continue on in a circle because you're never going to go anywhere, right? You might continue eventually, you know, on your path and then, you know, you've made a turn and then you continue straight. But under this 
okay, point where you are actually making a turn and changing. So here, okay, you are going to be under a centripetal force, which is allowing you or keeping you in that okay, circular path. And with that, this R that you have, that particular R is actually the distance to the center of the circle if you would have drawn it around and you continued on on that pathway. So this R is the radius of the actual circle that you would have made if you were be continuing on on your turn. So that's what would happen there. Now that R that you have is going to take on, okay, and the unit of it is going to be in meters if you want it again in SI units. Now this M, well, this one you might guess, okay, what this might be. This is the actual mass of, okay, your car or you or anything that you're spinning around, okay, that you have. So you have your mass, you have a constant speed, okay, and then you have your radius. Now, you may recall, okay, from the fact that Newton's second law tells us something interesting. It says that the net force that we have is equal to mass times acceleration if it exists. Now, this mass, right, is always the mass of the object that we have. Now, this acceleration is the acceleration that the object, okay, is undergoing. Now, what is the acceleration here? Well, this is the centripetal acceleration, and this centripetal acceleration turns out to be v squared over r that you have. And it also is, okay, it has a direction, and that direction, I'll just put in, okay, and it will mean towards the center or inwards, okay, towards the actual center of that circle. So this would have been, okay, towards here, okay, as you're going through. And that's the same thing, this is what we're referring to in terms of this centripetal force. So that centripetal force is always towards the center, and so is your centripetal acceleration. Now, this little c, and sometimes it might be c or ce, it doesn't matter, but that centripetal acceleration is the acceleration that the object is under. Now, if you want to know where this comes from and why this equation is actually v squared over r, at least its magnitude is, I'm going to put up a link up above there. Okay? I've kind of went through the derivation of that, and I don't want to repeat it here. But as you can see now, if this is indeed the case that we have acceleration as v squared over r, and this is just your mass, well, when you multiply the two, well, then it shouldn't be a shock. This is your mass, this is your acceleration, and when you multiply the two, you're going to get the f net. And in this case, the f net is actually the centripetal force, okay, that this particular object is under so that it can continue in its circular motion. Now, where does this, you know, centripetal force, okay, what, what is this centripetal force? Like, how can I think about it? Because if it is towards the center, right, as you're going through, typically if you're driving in a car, it's not what you feel. You kind of feel the opposite. So you feel the apparent force. And that typically is called the centrifugal force. But the centripetal force is the one that's keeping it in that circular motion. Now, where does that come from? One easy way to think about this is, let's say, forget the car, but let's say that you do have some kind of a ball, and then maybe this ball is attached to some string, and then you're spinning this string, right, and it's going, okay, round and round here, okay, as you're going through. Well, what you're going to do is, you're going to have a tension, right, that is held by this particular string. And of course, you know, you feel as you're spinning this around, you know, this tension as you're holding it is also in this direction. But at this point, this is the tension that is keeping it. And if, of course, if you, you know, if that tension is strong enough that it can keep that ball, and then you can spin it around and around, but that is going to be the tension. That is the actual centripetal acceleration. That tension, okay, is the centripetal force that you have that's keeping that ball in that circular motion. Now, if you're a car, well, then what's keeping you inside here? So if you're going and thinking about this, you know, and if you're spinning around, okay, and then you hear you have, you know, your car and it's moving around, okay, right here, and it keeps going. Well, what keeps it there? Well, you are on, on you know, hopefully a good four set of tires. And that those four set of tires 
okay, are actually pushing out against as you're going through, okay, and it is the friction, right, from the tires that's keeping you in that circular motion, in the, the, that ability. So it is the force of friction, in this case, that is the centripetal force that's keeping it inside. So centripetal force are all the forces that are keeping us, okay, and allowing us to continue on that circular path. If this is not strong enough, then you will not be able to make that turn, right? It's going to start to skid away, okay, or keep going, right? If this tension isn't strong enough right here, okay, and let's say it breaks, well, then the ball is not going to be continuing in a circular motion. It will just continue, and then you're back to Newton's first law. It will just go basically, okay, straight, right, because there's no other forces that are keeping it in that loop, so tension, you know, your actual frictions, those are the centripetal forces that are keeping it in that actual loop as you go. And if you want to calculate it, the equation is relatively simple, you know, so here it is. It's not bad at all, okay, that you can have it, you can plug it into your formula, and then you can obtain the centripetal force. Now, one other item that I would want to mention, and maybe that you should be aware of, okay, this centripetal, okay, that we have, this actually, there's a meaning to this. It means, right, and I believe it's Latin, it's center seeking. So that's what centripetal means. Center, well, it's towards the center and it's seeking because it's trying to keep, okay, on that path of that circular motion that you have. And this could be roller coasters that you have, this could be cars, okay, that you're going through, Okay, this could be um, the actual ball that is being spun around, or maybe some kind of a string or a rope. Anything that you're turning, right, or changing directions, centripetal force plays a part. And this is the same thing as we would have it even if we're turning as we're going through. You know, the sneakers that we're walking on, there's basically there's friction and it's not allowing us to slip away and it allowing us to keep that center seeking force and it's being present. So that's the equation. This is where it kind of comes from, right? So you can think about these forces of friction, forces of tension. And if you wanted to derive it, it's rather, rather simple once you know Newton's second law and you know what centripetal acceleration is, okay? And that you can just substitute and obtain it. And if you wanted to see, you know, how easy it is. So if we do have, let's say that this particular ball, okay, that I am spinning, it has a certain mass, maybe 2.5 kilograms, right? So that's what I would have. And then, you know, the radius or the actual string itself that I'm holding this on. So this would be the length of this particular string. So let's say maybe, you know, it's two meters that I have in there. If I know that, and then finally, you know, once someone tells me what the speed is, right, what speed this is moving it, you know, let's, for the, for the sake of this example, let's say it's five meters per second, that's what the actual speed is. And that particular speed, you know, so it's being spun around, if you wanted to know what the centripetal acceleration, okay, is and centripetal force, you can find those. So centripetal acceleration, okay, that you would have, would have been just simply v squared over r. So you can substitute your five, you can square it, you can divide it by two in this case. So this would have been 25 divided by two, which is 12.5 meters per second squared. So that's actually quite a big acceleration, okay, that you would have, and this would be towards the center. And then your centripetal acceleration, so notice here I put CE, okay, you can put C, both will work then that all is just a matter of now saying, well, this is now mass multiplied by your centripetal acceleration that you have, and you can substitute all of these back in here. Now, because I've already calculated this right here, so I already know that this is gonna be 25, you know, over two, and I can find out exactly what that is. So, you know, taking out my calculator, so 2.5 times, and I guess it's 12.5 from the others, this would have been approximately, you know, 31, and I'll keep it to two significant figures, 31 Newtons. And now if this is towards the center, so inwards, okay, that we have if you wanted to know what that particular centripetal force would be. And what this would mean is that the tension in this particular rope, that's what it would have to withstand, okay? 
Um, of course, if it can't withstand that force and it starts to break it, then there's not going to be no spinning ball, okay, that you can just wheel around back and forth, back and forth. So there you have it, okay? So that's something that you would have. And this is what centripetal force is about and then how to calculate it. The equation is simple, okay? And if you really want to know, um, and it comes down to, you know, where it's coming from, then I encourage you to click on that link uh, that I pointed out about centripetal acceleration. And there, you know, from there, it's easy now to derive. Once you have centripetal acceleration, multiply it by the mass and you have your centripetal force. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope that this gives you some kind of a sense about centripetal force. I'm sure that you're gonna be using in various examples. Um, it's not a very hard equation to apply. Okay, bye everybody.